Have you ever wondered why it's so hard to stop masturbating? Today we dive deep into the brain's love affair with porn and masturbation. Imagine the brain as a vast, bustling city with neural pathways like streets bustling with traffic. One of the most frequented routes in this metaphorical city? The one leading to pleasure, particularly the kind experienced during masturbation. Masturbation, like other pleasurable activities, sends a rush of neurotransmitters coursing through these streets. At the heart of this exhilarating activity is dopamine, often dubbed the feel-good neurotransmitter. It's the brain's way of giving us a pat on the back, saying, well done, let's do that again. This is the brain responding to pleasure by encouraging repetition of the behavior that caused it. Now let's talk about the brain's reward system, a real power player in how we develop habits. This system, which includes structures like the ventral tegmental area and the nucleus accumbens, lights up like a Christmas tree when dopamine floods through it. It's designed to reinforce behaviors that it perceives as beneficial for us, tying into our survival mechanisms. Originally, this system helped our ancestors prioritize vital activities like eating and mating. However, in the modern world, it often gets hijacked by less survival-oriented activities such as masturbation. During masturbation, the release of dopamine not only heightens the immediate pleasure, but also strengthens the neural pathways leading to the behavior. It's akin to paving that busy street in our brain city with smoother, faster material, making it more likely that traffic, our neural signals, will flow down that path again. Over time, this path becomes a well-trodden road, easily and often traveled. Now that we understand why our brain is so fond of this activity, let's explore how this fondness turns into a habit. As we move forward, we will uncover how these momentary pleasures can turn into compelling urges and what it means for someone facing challenges with masturbation addiction. Point one, your brain and masturbation. Let's dive into the intricate world of your brain where every action you take can subtly alter its inner workings. Now imagine your brain as a bustling city with neural pathways akin to streets that get busier the more they're traveled. Each time you engage in an activity like masturbation, it's like sending traffic through a specific street, strengthening that route and making it more prominent in the cityscape of your brain. This process is driven by a fascinating phenomenon known as neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is your brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout life. While it plays a crucial role in learning new skills and adapting to new experiences, it also has a darker side. It can lead to addiction. As you repeat a behavior, your brain starts to create and solidify pathways that make it easier and quicker to perform that behavior without much thought. It becomes almost automatic. This is where neurochemicals come into play, acting like fuel for the cars that traverse these neural streets. Among these neurochemicals, Dopamine, often nicknamed the feel-good hormone, plays a starring role. Each time you engage in behavior that releases dopamine, your brain notes that the activity is pleasurable and worth repeating. But there's more to the story. Oxytocin, another key player, sometimes referred to as the cuddle hormone, also spikes during pleasurable activities, enhancing feelings of relaxation and satisfaction. This combination of dopamine and oxytocin creates a powerful reinforcement loop, urging you to revisit the behavior that triggered their release. Thus, the cycle of addiction begins. The more you understand how these pathways are formed and reinforced, the more equipped you are to navigate the tricky terrain of addiction. By recognizing the role of neuroplasticity and neurochemicals, you can begin to see why breaking an addictive habit feels like trying to redirect traffic in a well-trodden city. Understanding the addiction is the first step to overcoming it. Let's see how we can begin the recovery process. Point two, repairing your brain's neurochemical pathways. In the journey to recovery from any addiction, understanding and mending the neurochemical pathways in your brain is crucial. When it comes to overcoming a habit as ingrained as masturbation, Techniques like mindfulness and cognitive behavioral therapy emerge as powerful tools. Let's start with mindfulness. This isn't just a buzzword. It's a practical approach to mental health. Mindfulness involves paying full attention to the present moment without judgment. Imagine this. Each time the urge arises, instead of acting on it, you pause. You observe these feelings and thoughts without engaging them. This practice helps in reducing the compulsiveness of the behavior by altering the brain's response to triggers. 
Moving on, cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT is another cornerstone in the recovery process. CBT is based on the concept that our thoughts, feelings and behaviors are interconnected. By changing negative thought patterns that contribute to and exacerbate compulsive behaviors, CBT helps individuals develop healthier coping mechanisms. It's like rewiring a complex circuit board, challenging but certainly possible with consistent effort. Both mindfulness and CBT are more effective under professional guidance. Therapists trained in these techniques can provide the necessary support and structure needed for recovery. Additionally, joining support groups can also be incredibly beneficial. Sharing experiences and strategies with others who are facing similar challenges can not only provide insights, but also reinforce a sense of community and understanding. Now, a question for you. Have you or someone you know tried any of these recovery methods? Share your experiences in the comments below. Hearing real life stories can be incredibly enlightening and motivating for those on the path to recovery. We highly recommend our book, Rewiring the Porn and Fap Addicted Brain, a neuroscience-based technique to overcome porn and masturbation. Link in the description box below. Remember to like and subscribe to stay updated on more insightful discussions like this one. Also, join our Telegram community with link in the description to join our conversations. Next, we learn how to retrain our brain. Point three, training your brain like a baby to overcome masturbation. Imagine you're teaching a baby to walk. You wouldn't expect them to get up and start running a marathon immediately, would you? Similarly, retraining your brain away from addictive behaviors requires patience, gentle guidance, and small, manageable steps. Retraining the brain is akin to teaching it new, healthier patterns and responses. It's about replacing the old, less desirable paths with new, beneficial ones. This process doesn't happen overnight. It takes consistent effort and a compassionate approach. Let's discuss some practical techniques that can aid in this retraining process. First, there's something known as exposure therapy. This involves gradual exposure to the triggers that lead to masturbation, but in a controlled environment where you can practice resisting the urge. It's about teaching your brain that it can encounter these triggers without engaging in the behavior. Next, setting realistic goals is crucial. These should be small, achievable targets that build on each other. For example, if your goal is to reduce the frequency of masturbation, start by aiming to extend the time between sessions gradually. Celebrate each success, no matter how minor it might seem. These victories accumulate and reinforce your brain's new pathways. Another powerful strategy is to replace the old habit with new, healthier ones. If you find that boredom or stress triggers the urge, introduce activities that are both engaging and relaxing. This could be anything from reading a book to going for a walk. The key is to find something that provides fulfillment and distraction. Approach this process with kindness and understanding toward yourself. Self-compassion is a powerful tool in recovery. It helps to mitigate feelings of shame or frustration that might arise. Remember, you are not just breaking old habits, you are actively building a healthier, more resilient version of yourself. Just as a baby learns to walk step by step, overcoming an addiction is a step-by-step -step process. Every small victory is a step towards a healthier brain.